Lovely. Um, thank you, Dawn. Um, tempted just to close my eyes and drift away with that meditation, but um, I want to start by saying how grateful I am to be here with you this evening or this afternoon, wherever you are. And um, just uh, something that's becoming clearer the longer that um, I find myself teaching is the, the changing attitude of people coming to satsang. It is um, more and more evident that more beings are uh, seeing that their own awakening is um, perhaps it's changing how we see our awakening is changing from um, being something that is rare and uh, only happens to a few beings in particular in any generation to perhaps a complete uh, turnaround on that viewpoint that it's now something that's not only becoming more and more common but that perhaps it's becoming a necessity for human beings to uh, to become conscious of what they really are and perhaps to transcend those uh, behaviors that come from uh, that are symptoms of this uh, restricted way of seeing ourselves as separate beings and so in satsang we have this uh, opportunity this um, right this privilege perhaps to uh, recognize what we absolutely are and then to embody that as much as we are able to in any particular moment to be part of this global wave of awakening that's really beginning to gather some momentum now as our planet our culture our society faces challenges but it never has before it's more important than ever that we make the best use of this time that we have um, in life in general but also this hour that we've got in front of us so without uh, further ado i'd invite you if you have questions or if you want to share your progress with me i'd love to hear how you're getting along and your feedback and uh, or any uh, challenges that you're going through any questions that you want to ask and um, i invite you to raise your hand if you have anything you want to talk about and we'll see uh, we, if we have time we'll uh, finish with a little meditation at the end of the session so if anybody wants to ask anything, feel free to raise your hand or to share. Awakening, when we do it together in a group like this, is uh, easier than ever before. Um, it really is going to be something that we can gather strength from each other. And this time we can use to really um, share our challenges, our growth and our problems as much as anything else and our questions. So uh, Sharon, did you have a question you wanted to ask? I might as well. I mean, you know, I have, I have, I have you right here, so <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of it. Um, you know, I, I think you might have got what I wrote today. I don't know yet, but I've had some very, very obvious. Uh, the awareness is alive. It's more powerful. It's in front of me. The silence is, is what I can go to. Now on Monday, I heard the sad song, and I was going to go back and listen to it because. You mentioned that there could be something that the ego will bring back in, and 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 I think it was even you even mentioned it could be about a friend or something, and uh, you know my friend that had her son pass away, um, I she was there on Sunday in your dissolving the ego, and when I spoke to her, um, I was like in a very up place, and she didn't she said she just guesses she's going to be depressed. And so the mind, so she hasn't answered any of my texts and the mind, I keep asking, so what is she made of? And I get complete silence and I stop the conversation because she's right in my mind. I can't hurt another being. But isn't it interesting when you said that on Monday that that's what happens when we get sometimes this, this clear seeing, this stabilized, it's like a stable awareness that is really in the forefront of my mind. I can feel it. I can 
it's almost like I can see it and I can feel like, like some, I told you when you, you had said, what are we made of on Sunday? Something heard that deeper and it was just a deeper, deeper awareness that yes, I, I, am, I am awake. I mean, the wakefulness is waking up. Sharon is just, you know, this disappearance. Yeah, the story is playing back now because Thanksgiving is tomorrow. And I, and it's going back more rapidly in the last hour. So I wondered like if you could, you could uh, speak to that. There's guilt there. I feel like her son died and look at me. I was able to have this wonderful thing with you and she couldn't, and, you know, it's all about like the identity. And, and I understand that it's, the ego is going to do that to expand me more, but you know, maybe you can help me with it. Yeah, it's um, as you as you kind of um, progress deeper in your awakening, the awareness that is constantly present becomes more obvious, doesn't it? More and more obvious, and um, we might experience that like we we don't have to look for it so much. Perhaps it's just uh, very obviously here, something that seemed to be not present at all when we first started. Suddenly, it's very in the forefront isn't it and more and more it just feels like what we are as identity shifts but there can be of course um when identity shifts to kind of recognize and i am that awareness i am that i'm not anything that i can perceive in the way that i thought um that has the um effect then of allowing these patterns to come to the surface because we as the awareness we can look at anything we can deal with anything that we've been avoiding so what that means in practice is something tends to come up that we haven't wanted to look at um, as a separate being some patterns that we haven't wanted to see or that we felt that we couldn't uh, process couldn't deal with you know, something uh, that is quite painful or, or our mind is labeled as painful that might be what you're experiencing yeah I, I, you know i had a compulsion I, you know for a long time with my younger son and um and so you know he comes up and i and i completely do the inquiries because uh, you know i was saying I, I wrote it down today on on awakening the yoga you're still questioning the question the open inquiry helps so much but i think what's coming up is um you know, guilt that, you know, this is someone I love very much and, you know, her son died and mine is living and it's just, a, you know, you know, it seems kind of silly when I look at it, but behind that probably is the fear of hurting someone. I mean, that's always been something that um, I think I had that from the beginning, right? You know, my story. So, I mean, it's just there still, like, you know, I can really still hurt someone else. And, you know, it's, I just- um, You also might experience this thing, um, as I began to feel better more of the time, I began to experience situations where um, somebody else was feeling some very negative emotion and the tendency was to, uh, to not want to experience peace then because it didn't seem right that I should feel peaceful and um, joyful you know while somebody else was really suffering uh, you might have experienced that with this situation as well there's some kind of um, taboo almost against you know sort of being being peaceful isn't there when someone is really struggling um, so that might come up as well uh, you know sort of a sense of compassion but you might find that your, your own peace is the best way you can help. Uh, you know, can be around someone who's really suffering. Your own peace is going to be the best place to help that being from. There's a deeper seeing of this guilt, you know, because of my mom and, um, and how I couldn't be happy because she was so sick and how she would make sure that I knew that. And I know that she was not even there. I know that she was the self. So I know that this had to all come to my awakening, but the deeper thing is that I feel guilty. Yes, that I could absolutely feel this, and why me and not her? That's that's just the way I've always been empathetic about because I had such a, a, an emotional roller coaster through my life, you know. 
So I, I, I feel the tears coming, which is great. That's a great sign. <laughs> Release it's, is always um, good. We have this uh, we have this idea, don't we, that we can't we shouldn't be happy until everyone else around us is happy. But it, it's always with our awakening, it's going to be the other way around, isn't it? It's it's um, you know for, first me, and then I can help other beings be happy. You know, if I can't find happiness and peace in myself, how can I? support anyone else in doing that and um you know really it makes so much more sense to look after our own awakening first because if we're still coming from a place of separation in a situation like that then we might not be able to offer any clear guidance or help or just comfort in those times when someone's really suffering really going through a terrible situation like that um so to some extent you have to kind of overcome this idea that it's a selfish thing to do to feel happy to feel peaceful and of course you're not going to be sort of dancing around with joy you know there's compassion for what they're going through but oh, yeah. losing your own peace doesn't serve the other being either does it it doesn't serve you it doesn't serve anyone um to to go back into separation and you lose your power to make that person feel better than with your presence yeah, and it's very clear to me that I'm sure you probably experienced it. And I heard one time I heard Byron Katie being uh, interviewed and she said, they, they asked her if she had any problems. She said, no, I feel bad about that too sometimes. Because she doesn't, you know, so she said that. That just came to me when you said that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not any, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm where you guys are, but where I am now is where I've never been. I've never had this much, uh, yeah, I'm in the background. I mean, I've had this swinging back and forth, but the embodiment is stronger. And um, and there's a lot of compassion for her. I love her deeply, you know, and I just, you know, I, I, I know that, you know, we both know, she and I talk about it all the time that he really didn't die. You know, he died in the dream, but, you know, and I think after that, the dissolving the ego, I guess something in her, I, she didn't want to talk, but I just sensed like, something must have made her go deeper into whatever it was, you know, because what you, it was a profound class, which is all that last class I have listened to every day, sometimes twice a day, because it was profound for this mind that I'm in or this being. And it just, I don't know, I'm just grateful, but you know, I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you. So thank you. It is um, just, just very quickly, there's one more idea that you might come up against, but that is this idea that we can't be happy all the time. You know, we can't be peaceful all the time. And you might notice that one coming up as well. You know, it's, it's something I had to look at in myself. I mean, is, it, is it actually a selfish thing to do, to wake up? Um, you know, I was told from lots of sources that it was, you know, people around me, but eventually you realize it's the best thing you can do for everyone, um, including yourself. So. I'm glad it's uh, giving you some help and some comfort as well. Oh, a lot. Thank you. And it's wonderful. It's beautiful. I, I would have thought that, you know, this was, you know, I, I was so frightened of fear now. And I, I just, when fear comes up, I ask, you know, what is this made of? Yeah. What is this really made of? And I, and I continue to do inquiry. And, um, you know, I, I realized that what I am can't really be touched by fear other than just the emotions that need to come up. So, you know, what happens when you ask what what is fear made of what what happens when you ask like that well sometimes you know because the mind is a translator they'll say awareness and other times it goes silent mm -hmm. it goes into nothingness and that's i would think did you, that's does your relationship with the fear change how you how you're feeling the fear does it change when you ask yeah it had changed in the last couple of days yeah it's changed where i don't I'm not uh, that that like you know when a mouse would come out like and I would see a mouse I would go you know ah like that because it's the condition the collective conditioning and I'm not like resistant I'm willing I'm uh, I'm very secure about it I know uh, I know what I really am and at the same time you know there's 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 that you know you know it, it's important to to connect with beings that are really in the state where you know where, where i'll get to or at you know at one point you said to me well you're already that and you're right but you know the the, the things that come up we're, we're so not used to you know like you know there's a story in my mind that when you awaken you're just happy and none of this has to stop 
and yet it deepens and it can do you know so i have a better relationship with fear yes I, I have also an, an absolute certainty that i am really you know who i really am and that has never been so solid so yeah in that way yes good because so, okay. there, there, there's a period after um a very clear seeing as it deepens of, of sorting through this stuff that we haven't been able to uh to look at or to process to heal as i'm sure you're aware and um that may go on for some time you know for me it was two or three years but um and still every now and again something comes up but if you if you're in the open stance of inquiry when when something comes up and you're wanting to really look at it and curious about it whether it's fear or um any any emotion that arises then you won't be suffering also while you're while you're uh looking at this it won't be um you won't be holding it as a separate being like i'm scared it'll be there'll be peace uh, and then there'll be fear inside that peace which is a really different experience then isn't it it is that's what i have right now yeah, I can feel the stillness. I can feel the peace, the silence. And yet there's, you know, there's um, necessary things coming up, yeah. you know. So That's a good word, it. necessary, you know, necessary rather than what we usually do is we usually say that this is coming up because I'm doing something wrong or I've slid backwards or something like that. You know, we always um, tend to put a negative spin on when things come up. Uh, so it's, I like that word necessary. It's necessary that this comes up, isn't it now? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Would anyone else like to ask a question or share something? Okay, Ellen. Okay. Um, Helen, I just was wondering, um, with the four practices and all of them, I feel, you know, I've got a long, long way to go to really get a full handle on them. I mean, I feel like I'm, I've got a good start. Is there any kind of hierarchy at all in terms of how they're applied or how they should be practiced or, you know, I mean, I know they're all related and I know that you've said that they all, you know, you could accomplish the same thing probably with all of them. Um, but I don't know if you, that's probably just a real beginner type question, but anyway, I just thought I'd ask you. Really, really good question. Um, for, for me, it seemed to go in kind of moods. There, there would be times when I just wanted to meditate, um, spend more time in meditation. And then some, uh, like we were just saying with Sharon, some pattern would come up, some guilt or some fear. And there'd be a lot of uh, contemplation going on for a while. And then it kind of naturally slide back into meditation when the energies are dissipated. Okay. And then that kind of would spiral around to more self-inquiry because the more you experience what's real, the, the more you want to know it. So it, it kind of just jumped around organically like that. Um, a time There were times when it was very little of anything else other than contemplation, but you know, it's this two or three year period um, I was talking about, uh, and you, you'll get a sense of, uh, you'll know better than anyone what's right for you at that time. You know, just, just to kind of have a basic working knowledge of, of those three things, um, then you can call upon them when you need them. Then, you know, you've probably seen that happening already, right? That you, you just feel, I really want to look at this. I want to question this, or I don't want to do that right now. I just want to sit quietly in the silence or something. Thank you. Good. Very good question. It's um, you know better than anyone. Always your own guidance is always better than, you know, mm -hmm. just to make sure we're not avoiding any of them. I might be avoiding contemplation because I, that's the one I really need to do. But you'll know that because you'll feel bad inside. You'll feel if you're resisting something. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Did anyone else like to ask anything? Or? There aren't any other questions we can um, go into a meditation. Okay, we'll go to Shirley. Yeah. Whenever you're ready.
I think he's still muted, Shirley, there. There we go. Sorry. We go. <laughs> no problem. I've recently come across your teaching through the Back Gap interview, and I've just been really grateful for, for, for your teachings and your contemplations and your questions. And something that you mentioned with Sharon that's really resonating with me, and if, if you wouldn't mind just talking a little bit more to that, is it's conflict that led me on my seeking path. Not always I was in the middle, you know, whether it was my parents in conflict or my mum and my sister in conflict. Um, and it's conflict that almost prevents me from deepening or, or, or going deeper as well. So although it brought me to the seeking path, it's also got a grip on me. Whenever my mum and my sister are in conflict, I find it really difficult not to, to, to be there for them in a, like you say, feeling okay inside, but seeing the, you know, the, the unhappiness and the, yes, what they're going through and not being able to do anything about it from the separate self. Yeah. So, uh, is it a situation where you're being asked to kind of get in the middle or do you just kind of find yourself not really just by default I'm in the middle because I'm the I'm the one who talks to both when they're not talking to each other and mm -hmm. yeah um I'd, I'd say to to look at um what what may help in between those times you know in sort of calmer moments is to look at why um how it makes you feel when when you're in that situation you know you, in sort of calmer moments you can look at what emotions do I feel in those moments um because um that will be sort of indicating some belief underneath that's playing um sometimes we find ourselves in that kind of situation to try to prove ourselves you know we're trying to we're coming from a sense of unworthiness or something where we feel uh we we have to kind of prove ourselves or sometimes there's a sense that if I can get these two beings to stop being in this conflict, then uh, I'll be safer or mm -hmm. um, I'll feel more loved or, you know, something like that. Going, or sometimes several of those um, sure. sort of motivations going on underneath. And sometimes it just it kind of helps to take an objective look at it. Um, one startling thing that I realized as well, it might not be this, this in this case, but I'd watch my mom and my sister sometimes argue. And I actually began to realize they, they enjoy it on some level. <laughs> you know, I, I, I hated it at the time. I couldn't wait to get out of that situation. I was in the middle. But I realized actually that they're, they're on some level, they're, they're enjoying this kind of, it's only really me that had a, a challenge with it, which is a strange thing. But um, you know, so kind of if you look at it don't wait till you get in that situation have a look at it and, and see what what am i trying to achieve when i step in the middle here am i trying to um does it bring up some fear i don't feel safe from people because that's a common thing you know people um being aggressive with each other even verbally sometimes can stimulate this own idea our own idea that we're not safe um and in those times we either tend to withdraw try to get away or we try to get step in and sort it out or you know just to look at what the motives are inside about why why this is going on why do you find yourself in the middle what's the um you know do you have to be the peacekeeper and what what, what happens when you try to do that do you find that um you get more respect from them or something or you know and you might be able to sort of recognize now as we're talking some of the reasons the feelings that go on um, and as you can um, separate the actual act of trying to get them two back together from the egoic motives of why you're doing it mm -hmm. then it'll begin to change uh, and you might find um, yourself able to say you know things that you might not be able to say right now was you know such a you know what I really don't want to do this anymore or mm -hmm. I really wish you could both find some common ground between, you know, some something different might occur. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's helpful or... It's something. very helpful because I was always thinking my intention is purely I just want to see them loving each other and connecting and, and being there. But I can see that I've got a strong fear how, how I'm feeling. So I'm, I think I must first look obviously at my fear first and then just be there and in compassion for both of them, whatever they choose 
however they choose to deal with the situation, but not from a fearful oh, place. Yeah. Sorry. It's I'm sure a... my, my fear clouds my 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 judgment of the situation. So I've never really addressed that. I've just been looking at the two of them rather and thinking I'm okay out here, but actually I can feel my fear as you were talking and mentioning and those sometimes we step in we step in for many reasons in, in a in a conflict like that. And you know, if you picture when you were a small child and that was the same thing was going on. It pro you probably felt very, very unsafe mm -hmm. in that situation where the beings around you were in conflict. Um, sometimes, you know, we can't recognize as a very young child that they're just arguing verbally. You know, we, we can't recognize that that's not the same as a physical threat. Mm -hmm. So this fear response happens and we it, it goes right into our adult life, doesn't it? Where we um, are still s assuming the same roles when the same thing happens, but maybe it's not um, become obvious yet that we might not have to do that, that we're doing it automatically out of some uh, base instinct to protect ourselves or something. Let me get this resolved and then I'll feel better, I'll feel safer, you know, and um, yeah. as, you, as you transcend that fear, just to look at, well, you know, was I ever really unsafe? Am I really unsafe now in this situation when it happens as an adult as well? Uh, you know, and you begin begin to get more options then on how you come to it, how you handle it, and you can do this outside of the actual situation when you sit on your own with a cuppa or something. You don't have to try to do it right in the middle of the, you know, when emotions are, especially when fear comes up, because you can feel quite disempowering in that moment. To, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The more awareness you get of it, why it's playing, why why you do those things at that time, the less of the effect you are of it. The more you can kind of see as it's happening, you might still be playing it out, but you're watching it a little bit more as well. You've got a little bit more um, control over what what you what the outcome of that is. What I what I've been trying to notice just over the last few days is recognizing that sense of self. It doesn't change whether they're in conflict or whether they're not in conflict. I'm just trying to just keep going back to that place that doesn't change, that doesn't get caught up in it. So, and and I will definitely also look at the fear now as well, just outside of that. So thank you. Just becoming conscious of it, the fear, and um, you might find a couple of motivations underneath there. You know, for, for me, uh, kind of assume the role of peacekeeper in the household, really out of want, wanting to be someone, wanting to be respected more and you know, also out of a fear response as well, you know, it was, uh, and these roles just never change then, do they? They really, We all grow up, but we're still doing the same thing. It's the same thing going on, yeah. So uh, you might just find it begins to shift as you, as you all, all you can do in your part of it is to look at what's going on inside. And you can recognize what's, what's real, the awareness, whatever we're calling it, the real self more and more. Uh, and th that's great. And then, then just to look at the egoic motivations of the separate self, why this is happening. They'll just begin to undo as you, to look at them. They, they just, we never really examined them. Have they been going for however long they've been going? Just on autopilot and just bringing some uh, awareness to them. They begin to, like, why am I still doing this? You know, I kind of had this moment once like, and I just got up and walked out of the room. I thought, I'm, not, I'm just not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. This is just a bit silly, really. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Good. Thank you. Very good. Good, good. Lovely. Great. Would anyone else like to ask any questions? <clears throat> okay, well, we will, um, if everyone would like to, we'll go into um, the meditation. Um, it would be a nice way to end before um well you all have thanksgiving we do it over here so be a good way to bring the session to a close so just um with meditation just however you're sitting just making sure you're comfy and um you can sit for we're gonna we'll sit for 20 25 minutes and um you can keep your eyes open or closed, whatever you prefer, just 
relaxing where we can, however your body is, just make sure it's nice and comfy. And we're just going to start by uh, watching, as always, watching our breath, just observing the movement of your breathing, just in observing and just noticing the in inflow and the outflow, the inhale and the exhale, just as it's naturally occurring. We don't need to try to change anything at all, whether it's fast or slow, whether it's regular or irregular, shallow or deep, it really doesn't matter. And we're just gonna notice the breathing. And it just helps to bring our awareness back into the body, away from mind, just center ourselves, be nice and present in this moment. And just as you're watching the breath, we're just gonna begin to recognize that knowing presence that is you, that is the real you. And it's that knowingness that knows right now how your body feels. It knows the movement of the breath. There's something about you that just recognizes spontaneously. Your body is in whichever position it is, and that it's just breathing, your heart beating. All of this you know effortlessly. And if some thoughts come across your mind, just noticing that you immediately know thoughts are present. There's something about you that's just kind of watching, just knowing. It knows whether your mind is empty or full. You know whether your body is comfy or agitated, restless. And if your emotions begin to move and change, you know there's some emotion instantaneously. What is this you that knows? You know your mind, you know your body, you know your emotions. You know your surroundings. You know the meaning of these words. And it's all known effortlessly, easily, spontaneously. You are that knowingness itself. That knower usually only knows thoughts, emotions, how the body feels. And now that knowingness is turning to look at itself. It knows itself. We have just called it I, we've called it me. And we can't really find 
this knowingness that you are, but we know it's here. You can know objects and things like thoughts. You can know sensations in the body, emotions. You can know what your senses are perceiving. Like these words. You can know all of these forms, all of these objects. And you can also know this knowingness that is you. It's not a form, it's not a shape, it's not a someone. It knows inside the body and outside the body. It knows thoughts about confusion and thoughts about clarity. It knows peace and fear. Where is this knowingness? somehow ever present, effortlessly here. And yet invisible, indefinable. Known only by itself, to itself. Everything that we experience, every thought we have, every sensation is recognized by this knowingness that is you. Nobody can find you, but you're always here. Nobody can limit you. You're already free. this knowingness that you are is just coming to recognize itself clearly. Becoming interested in itself rather than any object that's known. It 
your body, your thoughts, your senses are all appearing inside this knowingness. is silent and peaceful, completely whole and free. This knowingness that you are knows the presence or absence of sound. It knows the presence or absence of thoughts in the mind. It knows the presence or absence of forms in the formlessness. This knowingness has always been here. They watched as the body formed. It silently watches all throughout the life. It watches the thought, I don't know who I am. And it watches the thought, I do know who I am. And it's already free. Silent, invisible, intelligent, pure, effortlessly present knowingness. Unchanged, whether there's something to know or nothing to know. It just is. Just this knowingness, recognizing itself. Just this knowingness that you are recognizing its purity, its wholeness. That before there is anything to know, 
you are here as this knowingness. Unchanging, unmoving, not needing anything at all. When this knowingness takes the shape of a human being, it can finally come to know itself. And still, it just is. You just are. Spending some time falling in love with that knowingness that is you. You're not in any particular place and you are in every particular place. Effortlessly knowing, seeing silently. It's effortless for you to know. Spontaneously, just knowing. And now just coming to know yourself. And if a thought arises or some energy moves or an emotion arises, just recognizing that you instantly know it, instantly see it. that 
there really is no knower, but simply the knowingness. whether mind is busy or quiet, it makes no difference to the knowingness. Whether we feel a positive or negative state, the knowingness isn't affected. There isn't anybody that knows. There's just thoughts, emotions, experiencing, arising in this knowingness. Just enjoying how it feels. To recognize yourself. So in a few moments, we will be bringing this meditation to a close. 
But before we do that, I'd like to invite you to recognize that it makes no difference to the knowingness that you are, whether we're seated in meditation like this, or whether we're engaged in activities, moving, talking, that that knowingness remains constantly unchanging, ever present. and already free. So whenever you're ready, if you would like to open your eyes, begin to stretch, begin to move, Or if you don't want to, that's okay too. Thank you, namaste. Thank you. And um, a happy Thanksgiving to you if you're celebrating tomorrow. Thank you, Don.